Okay. And will you see the father as well? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? But you'll definitely see Jesus, yeah? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's fair enough. At least, at least you're saying you don't know. I think that's, that's fair if you don't know, you don't know. Um, with regards to Jesus dying, being crucified, yeah. yes? Yeah. Is that something that you see happening to God Almighty? That he died by his own creation? I believe that Jesus died. Uh, to be sacrificed for sin. And, um, now I'm not asking why he died. I'm okay. asking, is it even conceivable for anyone who believes in God Almighty yeah. that his own creation will one day kill him? Regardless of for what reason? Is that even conceivable? The infinite God Almighty, yeah. the most powerful, okay. yes? Yeah. He's been killed by this very creation that he created, who are weak in comparison to him. So you got the omnipotent God being yeah. killed by this creation yeah. who are oh, this is fallible, who are mortals, yeah. who are insignificant in power compared to God Almighty. Yeah. Would, how can you, I don't know, how can you grasp the fact that God Almighty has been killed by his own creation? Because... Um he, he, he knew that someone would have to die for, for the sins of the world. Why? Why can't God forgive? Like he used to in the past. In the Old Testament, the, um, the Bible, um, sacrifices were, were made and it was the uh, animals killed and their blood was shed. And that was pointing to a time when, when uh, the person who the New Testament calls the Lamb of God would come. The Old Testament was a lamb, it, it had to be a perfect sacrifice. In order to take away. You're explaining to me why he was killed. I told you I don't want to understand why he was killed. Yeah. We we are, we already know why he came to pay for the sins of the world and so on. Okay. Yes, this is a Christian understanding and doctrine that they believe in. Yeah. I'm not asking you why he was killed. I'm asking, can you conceive the idea of God being killed by? You know, before the animals were being killed, that wasn't God. Okay. Those were animals. Yes, okay. I can understand but animals can be killed yeah. for for, uh, for whatever reasons. You know, yeah. they believed in. Okay. But animal is not God. Yes, I, I still find it quite troubling when people compare God to a lamb. You know, first they made him human, then they made him an animal. You know, that's already already an insult to God to reduce him to the level of human and then to re reduce him to the level of a lamb, an animal. That is al already insulting enough. But I still want to understand how can you comprehend the, the idea of God being crucified by his own creation? How do, how do you reconcile that with the Almighty God's concept, you know, the concept of Almighty God? Why is that important? Why? Because God is immortal. God doesn't die. Do you, do you believe God is immortal? Yes, but also spirit, spirit can die. Spirit can die. Flesh, flesh can Say again? Die. Spirit can die and flesh can die. Can die. And we believe yeah, that if God spirit can die, can flesh can die. My question is, can God die? God, God, God doesn't die. God you know that? No, but Jesus came and Jesus died. Hence, Jesus is not God. If he can die, he cannot be God. Jesus um, had human uh, 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 as well as divine. So um, he, 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 he was able to not only die, but also to, to, rise, to rise again, to be, to be raised by God the Father. Do you believe Jesus is fully God? Yes, I do. Do you believe the Father is fully God? I believe that Jesus, yes. Did the Father ever die? Well, the Father didn't need to die. Did the, no, no need to die. Did the Father ever die? No, but Jesus died. Yeah, I know Jesus and died according to your belief, but what I'm asking Jesus, is... Well, Jesus also rose again, so Jesus no. is alive now. Yeah, yeah, well, he died and then he's alive now. That's yeah, called yeah. resurrection. Yeah, resurrection. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Does an immortal being need to resurrect? Um, but he, he had to die to for sin. You're, asking, you're giving me the reasons again. Yeah. I'm not asking okay. for the reasons. Okay. okay, an immortal being by definition doesn't die. If someone doesn't die, then it follows that there's no need for resurrection. But because Jesus was both killed and resurrected, clearly proves to us that he is mortal. However, God Almighty is always immortal. What does that tell you? That the nature of God Almighty is not something that we see in Jesus Christ. Not only did Jesus change in nature, like being only divine, now is divine and flesh. 
Yes, I know many Christians say that, but his divine nature did not change. But the essence doesn't include just the divine nature in the case of Jesus. The essence includes all of Jesus, his natures, his characteristics, his attributes. That is what the essence is. You as a human being, you have an essence. I cannot separate your humanity and your spirit and your soul. I cannot separate it because that's what makes you up. All these things make you up as a human. If you have no soul, that means you're a dead person. Yes? A person without a soul is a dead person. Yes? However... Say again? Yeah, but you're not immortal. The whole, the whole meaning of death is to separate the soul from the body. And did that happen to Jesus Christ on the cross, according to your belief? Yeah? Yes? So his flesh died and his soul did not die. Same thing happens to you when you die. Yes? Your soul doesn't die, your flesh dies. So in both cases, in your case and in the case of Jesus, the only difference is the method how he died. Yes? The method he was killed. However, the concept of death is the same in the case of every mortal. That the soul gets separated from the body, hence the mortal dies. However, that doesn't apply to God Almighty. Not the mortal that dies, is it? You just said it's, 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 yeah, sorry, No, no, mortal immortal, mortal, yeah, yeah, immortal okay. does not die, okay. mortal dies. Yes, you are a mortal, Jesus Christ is mortal. Yes, you both are susceptible to death, you are subject to death. God Almighty, according to 1 Timothy 6.16, just like yours. <laughs> just like yours because your flesh dies and your soul doesn't die that doesn't make you immortal my friend and many Christians unfortunately have this concept that the soul did not die so hence he is immortal no your soul doesn't die either yes you will be judged by God Almighty and depending on your deeds or depending on God's uh, judgment you will either face eternal damnation or eternal reward yes but that is up to God Almighty to judge however no one can say that you or I or any mortal out there cannot die. No. The whole idea of, uh, sorry, the, 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 whole dif uh, the, the main difference between mortal and immortal is that mortals die and immortal being like God Almighty does not die. And that is mentioned in 1 Timothy 6, 16 where he says, He alone is immortal who lives in unapproachable light whom no man has seen or can see. Yes? So immortal, the definition is already there. Someone who doesn't die. Mortal, on the other hand, even if he dies for three days and three nights, still considered mortal. Yes? But the concept of God dying by his own creation is something, something contradictory to the teaching of the Bible and the Quran. Yes? What, what particular teaching of the Bible? The teaching of the Bible in 1 Timothy 16 that God is immortal. Well, that's just one verse. I mean, the, the, How many verses do you need? Well, I can show you from, 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 from the Old Testament. The yeah, prophecy. okay. You show me a verse from the Old Testament. I can tell you from the Old Testament that the prophets said that one person will come and die. Yeah, the Messiah. Yeah, The Messiah was never to be worshipped as God in the, in the Jewish tradition, even today. Today the Jews are still waiting for the Messiah to come. However, they are not expecting God Almighty to come as a man. So do not try to confuse the Messiah with, well, uh, the, sorry, the Jewish uh, concept of Messiah with that of the Christian concept of Messiah. Because for the Christian, the Messiah is not just a man, but he is a, he is a God who became a man. You see what I mean? This is not the teaching of Judaism. So do not confuse the two. The Old Testament, nowhere in the Old Testament will you find that God is able to die. Nowhere in the Old Testament or even the New Testament, in fact, that God is able to die. This is there a are, later... There are, there are types in the Old Testament of how um, uh, uh, Abraham uh, offered uh, his son and um, that was uh, uh, a type of what would follow that God would give his son um, as, 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 as a sacrifice. Um, and, um, that, 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 that's did, Ab did Abraham's son die in the sacrifice um, or was he substituted? He, 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 Abraham's son didn't die, that's right, he, 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 he was substituted. Absolutely, you see, you see this is a clear concept that Islam teaches that Jesus did not die but he was substituted. Yes? Now, now you tell me which one is close to Abraham's sacrifice, the concept that the Christians preach that his son died. If you're basing it just on the, the illustration of Abraham and Isaac. But you brought up the Abraham, the okay, concept of Abraham okay, sacrificing, okay, sacrificing his son. You brought that up. Okay, okay, so about Give me another example where, okay. where it uh, points to the fact that God will die, come and die for you. Where? Um, in Psalms, David prophesied that um, uh, 
some, some 22, that, uh, that, um, there, there, will, there will be a, a resurrection. Uh, that is a prophecy about where, where in Psalms 22 does it say that this is God Almighty? Where? In fact, if you read the beginning of Psalm 22, this is exactly as Jesus cried on the cross, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Yes? So first and foremost, this is the prayer of David in Psalm 22, when he's saying that by day and by night I pray, but you do not listen to me. Yes? And then later on he says that he even, he even considers himself to be just a worm somebody who is insignificant. Do you believe Jesus was a worm? He wasn't. I believe that Psalm 22 is, yeah. is a prophecy of Christ's death. So you're telling me that Jesus is a worm, like David says he's a worm? Um, Beginning of Psalm 22, you know? Yeah, 22, know, 1, 2, 3, 4, if you read? Yes. No, so, so do you believe that God, God abandoned Jesus? Um, for, for a brief time, yes, because Jesus... Well, I thought he was God. How can God abandon him? Jesus, it doesn't Jesus, follow, does it? Jesus was bearing the sin of the world. God is holy, so God um, had to look upon Jesus when Jesus was bearing that sin. So let me get this right. You're telling me that Jesus was bearing the sins of the world, yes. but God was holy, so God cannot look upon Jesus. For, for that particular time. For that particular time. Did Jesus become the biggest sinner in the world? Because now he's got the sin of the whole world on him. That's effectively that's what you're telling me that God holy he's so holy he cannot even look upon his own son now and this son is meant to be fully God according to your belief so now you got one God who is who is bearing the sins of the world and the other God cannot even look upon him hence the other God now abandon him even brief time my friend just imagine the Trinity has broken for a brief time the Trinity that you believe in has now broken one God now cannot look at the other God Huh? No, no logic in this. Yeah. It's illogical. In, in, it's, it's incoherent, illogical. The Trinity concept is such that you have to could, play such many, many parts, gymnastics could, with words. Yeah. But it's about semantics. Can I just ask one quick question? Yeah. Is Allah mortal? Is Allah mortal? Allah is immortal. No, is Allah mortal? I just told you, he's immortal. No, but in order to be immortal, you have to be mortal. Who said that? You've got to have be, be because you can't be immortal. Why can't you be immortal? Because it's not it's it's in relationship to mortality. Why? Because that's that's the semantic. Okay, let me ask you this: Are you immoral? Are you immoral? Immoral? Yes. Am I moral or immoral? Are you immoral? Am I immoral? Yes. I'm not sure what that means. Because morality is related to immorality based on your concept. Morality. So you have to be immoral in order to be moral. That's basically what you're telling me. It doesn't yeah, follow, does it? it? Well, it's different because that's, it's a, not belief, different. that's a, a behavior and a belief rather than a substance. No, the nature of God is such that He does not die. By nature, He wouldn't be God if He died. But He's the one who's responsible everyone, for life and death. Everyone's got a mortal soul, haven't they? Yeah, we, but we're talking about God here, no, not no, everyone. No, no. We're talking about no, everyone has immortal souls. Immortal. Yeah, everyone is immo so, immortal. Soul. No, 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 it's not immortal soul. Immortal, in the sense, means if God wants even a soul, even a spirit like an angel to perish, he can do that. It depends what you mean. You by cannot perish. say immortal. Perish means gone, good, killed, angels gone. Appear. Yes. Angels are not immortal. Aren't they? But why is he put them Sorry. Together? Yeah, I agree. Angels are not immortal. Yes, but he's not an. He's a. Um, you're, you're an atheist or agnostic. I forgot. Don't worry. <laughs> I know. I know. No, so that's why you. No, no. It's, it's good. You ask this question because many people might have this question that souls are all immortal. They are not. If God wants to perish but, a soul, wants to basically finish a soul or even cease to exist of that particular soul, he can do that. But fundamentally, unless God does that, the souls are immortal. There's no such rule. I don't know where you get that rule, fundamentally. There's no such fundamental rule that souls are immortal. If no, God wants if, to... Unless, unless God uh, perishes the soul, yeah. the soul is therefore immortal, immortal otherwise. Yeah, so if God wants a soul to be immortal, he can do that. No, no, if no, God no, wants to perish a soul, he can immortal. do that. No, there's no such naturally thing, I'm telling you. So it all depends on how God wants to, uh, basically how, how God wants to create that soul. If God wants it to be perishable at a particular time, then it can. That's like like humans. Time limit. Say again? That's what happened with the, all the world of animals, mm. the dead time. Yeah. When the, the believers go to the heaven and the unbelievers go to the hell, yeah. the, the animals, all cease to the exist. animals will yeah. perish. And they will say by the Quran, yeah. They wish when the unbelievers see the hell, 
and see the animals the become the sand yeah. they will the wishes to be actually sand. according to the Christians they don't am I right no, no, the animals no, no, don't have salt yeah. in, in, in Islam they do yeah yeah we believe they, they do yes. and we have must be more mercy even we eat them yeah we, we should and be we merciful to all of them yeah. forbidden I wonder why why Christians believe animals don't have salt Okay, because of the Bible. Okay, it's a contradictory, <laughs> it's <good> <laughs> contradictory the science. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, it's contradictory. Anyway, so let's get back well, to. Course, yeah. Let's, many, many things it, let's let's get back to the discussion. Uh, so look, okay, look, I don't know for you if it's comprehensible. So if, if it's if, if it makes sense to you, that God who is immortal is be is is able to die by his own creation. To me, that is inconceivable. You know, for God Almighty, who is omnipotent, to die by his own creation, yes. When he could have easily forgiven them, why? Why have this condition that until because blood is is, is spilled or until there is a human sacrifice, you cannot be forgiven? Why have this condition? No, I just did that. Okay, the Old Testament sacrifice of, of, of the blood yeah. um, was to make to make an atonement for the soul. Um, an animal, an animal had to suffer. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't all the time. You know that. Huh? For example, if you committed adultery. Not you. I mean, let's say if somebody committed adultery in the Old Testament time, or they killed someone, yes, they can't just sacrifice an animal and get no. away with it. No, no, no. Do you agree? No. So there were certain capital punishments sure. for certain capital offenses. Yeah. Yes? yes. So you cannot just sacrifice those sacrifices which you find in Leviticus. Yeah. Yes. Those were meant for unintentional sins. No, not just unintentional sins. No. Mainly unintentional sins. Not so if you look at, not, if you have capital no. offenses, you cannot just get away with not, it. Not just unintentional. And and by the way, it wasn't animals all the time. You could even donate flour if you did not have the money to buy an animal for sacrifice. Yes. So it wasn't blood sacrifice all the time you could have sacrificed the, 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 on the altar the, the says, flour which you make bread out of in, in, in but the Lord Moses says that it's the, it's the blood that makes an atonement for the soul so that, that is um, yeah but that's the, that's what that's the question I'm asking you why this rule also in uh, Hebrews 9 22 when it says there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood do you believe that I do believe. so do you, do you actually are believing in payment not forgiveness do you know that a payment by blood is not the same as forgiveness. For example, if somebody borrowed a hundred pounds for, from you and you tell that person, I forgive you, are you still expecting some payment from him? No, you're like, you're like, you're like, exactly. But That's called true forgiveness. Yeah. When you don't expect something, once you've forgiven yeah. them. Okay, but, but if someone breaks the law and they go and the judge says to them that there's a penalty for, for, for breaking the law. Yeah, that's called that's payment. Awesome. Yeah. That's called payment, exactly. I totally agree with you. That's what happened with the animal sacrifices. The animal lost its life. Okay, and, that, that, and that, that, that blood was was sufficient for God to understand that, um, that, that, that the sin could be removed. So it's payment by blood in that case. Yes. So there is no true forgiveness. You see what I mean? But why, in but order, why, why is it not true forgiveness? Because it's not true forgiveness. Because when you actually expect payment by blood, that's not really forgiveness. But, it's it's like the play it, of Shakespeare. It, it, yeah. You know, a flesh. <laughs> what, what they call that? Um, a, pound a pound of flesh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You see what I mean? Yeah. So that Jewish person was asking for a pound of flesh, yeah. yes, as 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 a counterpayment, yeah. yes. See. Now this is what I'm saying. In Islam, we have the concept of true forgiveness, where Allah doesn't expect blood sacrifice, a human sacrifice, or an animal sacrifice for the atonement of sins. Yes, Allah is able to forgive you truly. Yes, if the condition is if you repent to Him truly. A true repentance can give you forgiveness from Allah without Allah expecting anything in return. Now this is the concept we have in Islam. However, you just demonstrated that in Judaism and in, uh, in Christianity, you don't have such a concept because God is either asking you payment in blood or maybe payment as a human sacrifice in the case of Jesus in the New Testament time. Yes. This concept of human sacrifice is something that God completely forbade and prohibited in the Old Testament time. Well, no, because um, in um, Abraham, when he was going to uh, offer uh, Isaac, God uh, yeah. obviously you know, knew what was going to happen. I mean, what, 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 why did God say that you... That was a test. A test. Yeah, because yeah. we know ultimately Abraham's son wasn't sacrificed. No. Yes? No, Whether you believe it's Isaac or Ishmael, that's irrelevant. With this point, the point is at the end, he was not sacrificed. Correct. You see what I mean? Correct. So God did not expect 
a human sacrifice. It was, it was a time. Yeah, it was a test. For example, if I give you a test, yes, and I know that you will carry out the test willingly, yes, and at the last minute I stop. Yeah, that's fine. At the last minute, if I stop you.